It's such an unassuming little town in the southwest of Germany. Until the end of the Second World War, it was not interesting at all. But it was here that the course of history was about to change in a completely different direction. For the worse, of course. Hangerlock is known to have existed as early as 1095, when a castle stood here somewhere. They don't know where. For some time, the Austrian Habsburgs owned the estate. But for most of that time, Hagerlach belonged to the Hohenzollerns. However, the tangled history of many Germans until the unification of Germany did not touch the market town in any significant way. The really interesting stuff didn't start happening a few dozen meters below the floor of the church until the Second World War. It was after the massive Allied bombing of Berlin that the decision was made to move the most important research facilities out of Berlin. Part of the research team from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute moved to Hagerlodge. It is said that Walter Gerlach pointed out a convenient beer cellar in Hagerlodge. The history of German nuclear research is complex and is still only partially known today. The possibility of obtaining a source of energy unimaginable at the time by nuclear fission was a topic of discussion among scientists in the 1930s. The problem was how to break the nuclei. The biggest hurdle was overcome on the 19th of December 1938 by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann with the help of Lisa Meitner. Not only did they succeed in breaking the uranium nucleus for the first time, but they also discovered that so-called slow neutrons were needed for the fission reaction. They published their discovery on the 6th of January 1939 and later won the Nobel Prize for it. In August 1939, the first meeting of nuclear researchers was held at the Army Ordnance Office. Werner Heisenberg testifies when asked by the soldiers whether it is possible to build an atomic bomb and the Uranium Society is founded. In December of the same year, Werner Heisenberg comes up with a nuclear reactor project. In April 1940, the Third Reich invades Norway to overtake the British and the heavy water production plant at Amork falls into their hands. In May 1940, the Germans invade Benelux in France and seize huge uranium reserves from the Belgian Congo. They have had uranium from the second known deposit in Jakimov since the autumn of 1938. In July 1940, Richard von Weizsäcker proposes plutonium as fissile material. In December 1940, the world's first reactor is built in Berlin. Although the German atomic program was downplayed in the post-war years, by early 1941 the Germans had a huge head start. They had at their disposal the best experts in the field, the discoverers of fission themselves. They had the only heavy water plant in operation at the time and had built the first reactors. And they had virtually all the uranium in the world at their disposal. The program was going well for the Germans. The first fission reaction briefly takes place in June 1942 at the Leipzig reactor. The German scientists were thus ahead of Enrico Fermi, who had attempted the same thing in the United States. A month later, the Leipzig reactor explodes due to a reaction between uranium and water, and the Germans discover that working with powdered uranium is not the best idea because of the risk of spontaneous combustion. The seriousness of the situation is shown by the British's determined efforts to destroy the heavy water plant, and their equally determined efforts to rebuild it after its destruction. Norwegian resistance fighters sent by the British succeeded in destroying the factory in February 1943, but the Germans still attempted to restart production, which they partially succeeded in doing. The definitive end to the Norwegian chapter of nuclear research was brought about by another action by Norwegian resistance fighters who, through sabotage, managed to sink a ferry carrying the remaining heavy water to Germany in November 1943. While by 1943 the German nuclear program is fairly well mapped out, from then on it is somehow lost in the fog. In June 1943, the Uranium Society passed from the jurisdiction of the Armaments Office to the Reich Research Council. 
From then on, it is said that the Germans no longer aspired to a nuclear weapon. But this is not matched by the enormous efforts made by the Americans, together with the British, in the Manhattan Program, in which they tried to outstrip the Germans and develop a nuclear weapon before they did. As you already know from earlier reports on this channel, the traces of German nuclear weapon development recently discovered in the tortuously declassified US archives are quite disturbing, and it turns out that the most important things are still unknown. The question is whether the reactor at Hager Lodge, which failed to become fully operational until the American conquest of Hager Lodge, is unknown precisely because it failed to become operational, and we can still only guess how many other chapters of German nuclear research we do not know. The Hager Lodge reactor was a concrete shaft with an aluminium vessel in the middle in which experiments were carried out. The space between the walls of the concrete shaft and the vessel was flooded with water to dissipate the heat generated. Around the edges of the vessel were blocks of graphite to reflect neutrons. A total of 78 chains of Yahimov uranium blocks were lowered into the reactor. The cubes had an edge length of 5 cm and there were a total of 664 cubes in the core. Just to give you an idea, a 5 cm long uranium cube weighs almost 2.5 kg. That's one and a half tons of the metal. In the center of the vessel was a neutron source made of radium and beryllium. The spacing between the chains was 14 cm and measuring neutron probes were introduced into this space. The experiments themselves consisted of gradually flooding the inner space with heavy water and measuring the temperature and amount of neutrons released. But the results of the experiments here were are not entirely known. It is said that in order for a sustained fission reaction to take place here, the core would need to be enlarged by about a third. The Americans took possession of the nuclear facility on April 23, 1945. The original reactor and all equipment were taken away and the basement was to be destroyed. It is, of course, questionable whether the clergyman was concerned about preserving the basement or rather preserving the church above it. In any case, thanks to him, a replica of the reactor could be installed here, and we can quietly contemplate how far the Germans actually went in developing the miracle weapon and whether there may be similar facilities where the Germans went even further, which we have not yet learned about. <laughs>